Hey guys, OpenAI just released three brand new models, GPT-41, 41 Mini, and 41 Nano. And these new models come with some very exciting new features. And in the rest of this video, we're gonna answer two questions. First, what are the most important updates that you need to know about these new models as a developer? And second, should you actually be using these new models inside of your real world developer scenarios, such as coding, chatting with these models, and integrating these new AI models into your AI powered applications. So let's go ahead and start breaking everything down so you can decide if you want to start using these new OpenAI models in your own projects. Oh, and real quick, if you're looking to get help on your AI projects and to join a community of over 6,000 like-minded AI developers, I definitely recommend checking out the free school community I created just for you guys. We have weekly free coaching calls where you get to hop on a call with me and other developers in the group so we can get you unstuck and moving forward on your AI projects. Definitely recommend checking out by clicking the link down in the description below. But enough of that, let's go ahead and hop back to the video. So let's go ahead and do a speed run of the seven most important things that you need to know about the new GPT 4.1 models that have just been released. So the first major improvement you're gonna notice with the new GPT 4.1 models is the fact that all of them can support up to 1 million tokens of context, which is a huge improvement from the previous limit of 128,000 tokens that we've been stuck at for a really, really long time with these OpenAI models. And if you actually dig deeper into one of the tests that they ran, I was really, really impressed. When they ran a needle in the haystack test, which is where you look up one key piece of information in our huge context window, it performed perfectly across the board. And here's why this is so important. In the past, models used to do really good at looking up information at the beginning and the end of our tokens. So when you pass in a huge context window, they would perform really good at the beginning and the end. But in the middle, it was no man's land and it would usually struggle to find information or and really perform this needle in the haystack test. But with these new models, it performs perfectly across the board, which I thought was super impressive. And the second major improvement that you're gonna notice inside the new GPT 4.1 model is that it's going to appear way smarter when you have a long conversation with it. And the reason why is the MRCR score doubled. Let me break it down real fast because it's definitely confusing at first. So MRCR score basically refers to the ability for a large language model to track and understand what different words refer to over a long conversation. So when you're saying, hey, please go improve my email, well, it's going to figure out, oh, when you say email, you're talking about the email from 20 messages ago where you had the subject line, please like and subscribe to my channel. And that's what the email you're talking about and referring to. Okay, cool. I now know how to go back, refer to it, and make the changes that you're asking. So this is a huge improvement. The score absolutely doubled when looking at GPT 4.1 compared to the previous 4.0 models. So this one's huge, and I'm really excited for this update. And the third major improvement you're going to see inside of GPT 4.1 is that it's way better at following instructions. In fact, compared to GPT 4.0, it's about 60 to 70% better. So when you do things such as, hey, please, when you go forward, make sure always to return your results in Markdown. It should do that. Or when you pass in negative instructions such as like, hey, in all of my emails, never include an emoji again, it should absolutely do way better at that. Or when you're doing a voice agent and you say, hey, make sure you get the person's first name and last name before going off and handling their questions, do that. So as you can see, it just all around instruction handling is way better. And this is super important inside of our LLMs because we need to make sure they behave appropriately so that we can go off and deploy them in production and actually trust what they're doing. So super impressed with this one as well. And the fourth major improvement you should see when starting to use GPT 4.1 is that it is way better at coding compared to the other OpenAI models. So the first benchmark we're going to look at is the SWE benchmark, which is basically when they give the large language model a code base and they say, hey, here's the problem go forth and solve it. Well, it absolutely beat all other models, which is wild. So when you actually look at this, GPT 4.1 completely destroyed 4.0. It almost doubled the performance on this benchmark. And what I thought was super surprising is that 4.1 also beat O3 mini, which is a thinking model, and it beat 4.5, which is a really expensive model. So all around GPT 4.1 is nothing to sneeze at when it comes to coding. Now, another test that they run when it comes to checking out to see how these models do when it comes to coding is the polyglot benchmark. And all that means is the ability for these models to edit different code within a file. So think you're inside a cursor where you just said, hey, OpenAI, please go off and adjust this part of the file, delete this part, and add this section. Well, that's exactly what's happening. It should be 
altering you know pieces of code within a file. And GPT 4.1 did pretty good. It really destroyed GPT 4.0, but it was not as good when it comes to O3, which is the thinking model, and it definitely still beat 4.5, but you know it's not the best for coding when it comes to using it with tools like Cursor. And we'll actually talk more about this later in part two. So let's go ahead and hop over to the next improvement. All right, guys, so let's go ahead and dive into the fifth most important piece of information you need to know about these new models, which is price. So let's go ahead and look at the big boys first, and then we'll dive over to the other ones. So first things first, GPT-4.1 is the new model. So it is all around smarter than GPT-4.0, and it's also cheaper than GPT-4.0. So when you actually look side by side, it's roughly around 21, 22% cheaper across the board. So the new model costs $2 for inputs, the old model costs $2.50. The new model cost $8 for output and the old one cost 10. So yeah, roughly a 20% cheaper for a much smarter model, which is pretty impressive. They've absolutely crushed that. The other thing that is, I think, important to note is to look at how GPT-4.1 compares against O3 Mini, because roughly in certain parts, they were comparable in intelligence, especially in certain coding tests. So this is something that I thought was pretty interesting is that O3 Mini is way cheaper than 4.1. So O3 Mini, is about a dollar, a little over a dollar, while for input, while GPT-4.1 is around two dollars. So it's it's actually like almost twice the cost on input and output. So you know if you're kind of coding on a budget and you have to use OpenAI models, would definitely recommend really considering O3 Mini compared to 4.1, at least based on price. Now the one thing that is pretty important is obviously if you're working with a bigger code base, GPT-4.1, just a reminder, does have access to that million token context window, while O3 Mini only allows for 200. But caveat though, is if you are needing to make bigger change, these GPT-4.1 models are still limited to that 32K token output window, which is really tiny. I'm still baffled that they haven't improved that. But enough on the big models. Let's go ahead and see how the other mini models stack up because there was a huge shock in this one. So when you look side by side at the new models, we'll start with 4.1 mini. So 4.1 mini all around, we're gonna see that it has a 40 cent for every million tokens input, so pretty cheap. But when you compare that to 4.0 mini, the existing old model, it's almost three times as expensive. So you wouldn't guess that based on all the hype around it, you would have assumed it was gonna be even cheaper than the old model. So what's actually happening if you look at it side by side, the price goes 4.1 nano is the cheapest at 10 cent, then it's 4.0 mini is the second cheapest at 15 cent, then you bump up to 4.1 mini. So that was definitely a shock when I first saw it. So, but you know, what is cool with the new mini models is that you still get access to that 1 million token context window like you do on the big one. And final thing, while I'm just have this this cut up, the cutoff for all of these is still 2024. I was hoping it was gonna get bumped up to 2025, but that is not true. So some of the models, the new 4.1 models have a cutoff of 2024, May 2024, and 4.0 and O3 mini have a cutoff in 2023, which is forever ago at this point. So all around, I thought that was really interesting, but let's go ahead and head over to the next one. So the next thing I wanna talk about with you guys is the speed of these models. So we're gonna go ahead and hop over to GPT 4.0 one real fast and I do want to mention all of these speeds have come from open router specifically when you look at the very bottom of the screen you can see the latency and throughput now if you're not familiar with these terms latency just means the average time it takes for the provider to send its first token so you send the request and you're just sitting there waiting for the provider to respond so in this case for GPT 4.1 it's half a second and then throughput is how many tokens per second on average is the provider sending back to you. And a token is roughly, I think one word is like three to four tokens. So this is like 25 words per second is what's getting sent back to you. So let's go ahead and actually see how the old models and the new models stack up against each other. And I think what's the best to start with is GPT 4.1 Nano, because this is what they kept talking about in all of their press releases saying, hey, this is our fastest model and cheapest that we've ever created. And you can actually see, yes, it is the fastest, meaning it's, you know, basically a tenth of a second faster than everything else. So that is faster. So that means it is going to be great for doing like if you're working with voice agents and you need to like quickly go look something up or make a quick call or something like that, you really might want to start exploring with 4.1 Nano strictly because of that latency right there is gonna feel more natural so the person's not stuck on the phone forever. The other one is the throughput. So this is like how fast it's gonna start generating and spitting back results to you. And as you can see, there's like a direct correlation with how smart the model is and how many tokens it can spit out per second. So dumb model, fast, 
smart model, slow. So all around the four ones, they are all faster than 4.0. And then on a direct comparison, it did look like 4.1 mini. The new one is not as uh, fast as the old one. But when you actually go back and look at the price, if you remember, this one's like three times more expensive, which probably means it's, you know, three times smarter as well. So that's why, you know, it's not really direct apples to apples comparison. But all around, as you can see, these models are getting faster and cheaper, which is amazing. It's a great time to be alive. So let's go ahead and look at the seventh most important thing that you need to know about the new models. And the last piece of information you need to know about the new model is first off, this is for the developers, meaning it is only available through the API. So you won't be able to access this a normal ChatGPT land. And the second thing that you need to know is that this is actually going to deprecate GPT 4.5. All around, this new model was basically just as smart, if not smarter, than 4.5. But you know, according to the OpenAI team, it's actually much cheaper for them to run. So as soon as they can, they're going to be dropping GPT 4.5 preview and replacing it completely with GPT 4.1. So I thought that was pretty interesting because they spent an insane amount of money on this model and now they're just dropping it in replace of 4.1. So, all right, that's enough for going over all the updates you need to know. So let's actually hop over to part two where we're going to see like, hey, great, they made a ton of improvements, but you as a developer, should you actually be using it or shouldn't you? So let's go ahead and hop over to part number two. All right, guys, welcome to part number two, where we're going to answer the question, where should you be using GPT 4.1 inside of your workflow as an AI developer? And we're going to be looking at three different tasks, coding, chatting, and AI apps. So when it comes to coding, we're talking about using this model inside of cursor. When it comes to chatting, we're just talking about if you were to use this model to go off and actually like solve problems, which one would you use? And the third thing we're going to be looking at is AI applications. So specifically really looking at how does this model perform when it comes to AI agents. So we're going to speed through these so you know exactly what you need to be doing when it comes to this new model. So first things first, when it comes to coding, what we need to look at is specifically the SWE test inside of the comparison chart that I have that Gemini 2.5 Pro put together. So when it comes to coding, what we want to look at is these two tests right here. The polyglot, which is when we were looking at making changes to our files. And the other one was the sweet benchmark verified. So let's go ahead and unveil the scores for these GPT 4.1. So you can see how they stack up. So right out of the gate, the, you know, it's kind of a blowout, <laughs> truthfully. So the short answer is when it comes to coding, GPT 4.1 really struggles compared to Gemini 2.5 Pro. So you can see right out the gate for polyglot, the Gemini 2.5 Pro takes the cake and, you know, it's up 20 something percent compared to GPT 4.1. Now, when it comes to the SWE benchmark, which is like, hey, just go solve this problem. The model that wins here is Claude 3.5 Sonnet. It dominates. So really, if you're thinking about coding, I mean, my go to is always Claude. Something that is important to note, though, is yes, GPT 4.1 absolutely gets destroyed here. However, one of the things is Gemini 2.5 Pro, its response time and latency is wild. Like sometimes it can take up to eight seconds for Gemini 2.5 Pro to re return its first token. So yes, it is very, very, very smart. However, it can take a while. So Gemini 2.5 Pro, it is the smartest. However, at a caveat, it takes the longest. Claude 3.7, just all around a great model. It's fast and it's very smart when it comes to coding. So I'm gonna give it a thumbs down for using the new GPT 4.1 for coding. So this one, even though it's smarter than 4.0, it is a no-go on coding. Stick to Claude. All right, the next one is chatting. So when it comes to chatting using GPT 4.1, the main two tests that we really need to look at were MRCR. So this is when you're you know, having that long conversation conversation with the model of saying like, hey, please go off and improve that email from a while ago and being able to refer back to it and actually, you know, yeah, I know the email you're talking about and I can fix it. So this one, once again, not the best model. Per usual, GPT 4.1, it is like an improvement like we saw from the previous ones, but it cannot hang with Google at all. So Google, yes, it is gonna be slow compared to, you know, GPT 4.1. However, it just does so much better. So you are gonna wait for these results, but if you need high quality results, there's nothing that beats Gemini 2.5 Pro right now. It is all around the best model to help you with your workflows. So now I will say asterisks on these test results because whenever I was looking at these results for O3 mini, O3 mini high was supposed to have like a 61%. 
And when I actually looked at the OpenAI docs, this number wasn't exact one to one same. However, you know, so even though I couldn't get the exact match for these numbers, I mean, it's still nowhere close, like 94% compared to 50%, like they're not even close. So all around as well, when you're trying to chat with these large language models to go off and help you perform a task. So writing big emails or whatever you need to be doing where you're giving a lot of instructions and talking back and forth. Once again, GPT 4.1 is not the model you want to actually be looking at. And now what we want to do next is look at the third most important thing that we do as AI developers, which is actually using these AIs inside of our applications. And I think one of the best ways to actually look at this is actually see how GPT 4.1 performs inside of an agent. So what I did is I actually went off and used the new GPT 4.1 inside of a crew that I built a while ago. And this is where finally we have good news. So long story short, I have a crew that helps me write a newsletter. So all around this newsletter crew takes in a brain dump, it writes a newsletter, it edits it, and then it spits it out. So that's basically what this newsletter crew does. And what I want to show you is this crew has a ton of instructions. So you can see inside of here, it's just, you know, like instructions, goals, best practices, more best practices, expected output, like for every task inside of this crew, there's a ton of information that I ask the agent to follow, which really is super helpful because GPT 4.1, one of the biggest improvements they made was making sure that it does much better at following instructions. And it really shows. So let me show you one of the old, this is what GPT 4.0 did when writing a newsletter. So all around it went ahead and did like a deep dive in a newsletter. And then it kind of skipped to some step two, then it skipped to step three. So all around it, it did have steps, but this is just like kind of short, which is not what it's supposed to be doing. So let me show you what GPT 4.1 did, where it actually followed what it was supposed to do when it came to writing a newsletter. So all I did was just swap out the model underlying it and GPT 4.1 absolutely dominated it. It went through and it came up with great titles like it was supposed to for each subsection. It included the proper amount of context. It highlighted things how it was supposed to. It wrote in bullet points to make things easy to skim. Like all around, GPT 4.1 absolutely crushed it. So key, you know, takeaway, going back to our chart and just like, you know, like a quick me vibe checking it, is I will 100% using GPT 4.1 inside of my agents going forward whenever I need to just work on well-rounded task. So GPT 4.1 is going to become my go-to model inside of agents. And the reason why I'm staying away from like, you know, Gemini Pro, even though like it dominated everything else was strictly because of speed. As you saw earlier, when it comes to, you know, in this case, I was writing a newsletter. I don't want that to take 10 years to write. I just want it to like speed through it really quickly. So that's why, you know, GPT 4.1 absolutely crushed it. So I do also just want to show you guys a few other things because I already have the data. So I just want to show you real fast just because like GPT 4.1 still gets its butt kicked and a bunch of other stuff, even though it's good for our AI applications, just all around. Once again, it is not the best when it comes to performing math. Yes, it does beat a few open AI models like 4.5 but still like it is not the best for hardcore thinking when it comes to like looking at analyzing images, it does do pretty good compared to other models, like, but all around, you know, nothing wild. It's pretty standard to what exists. And the only thing it is better that other models is when it comes or almost better is multi-language. So it's still not even better there as well. So all around GPT 4.5 in summary, it is not the best model to help you inside of your workflows for coding or for chatting. However, personal recommendation as you're going off, if you need a new go-to model inside of your AI applications or to run your agents, I would 100% recommend to start using GPT 4.1. I think you guys will really be impressed with the results because it does a great job following instructions. It absolutely crushes it and its price to speed ratio is, is amazing. So definitely would recommend checking out, but let me know if you guys have any questions on anything that I've shown today. Happy to dive deeper or answer any questions you have. And that's a wrap for this overview of the new OpenAI GPT 4.1 models. I hope you guys learned a ton and I'm super excited to hear what you are gonna be doing with these new models and if if you're actually gonna be using them, not using them, I'd love to hear it all. Drop a comment down below. And quick reminder, I have that free school community with over 6,000 members. We have weekly free coaching calls. Definitely recommend joining it. Check out the link in the description below. Also, I have a ton of other AI related content right here on this channel. Everything from Core AI, LangChain, everything you can think of, I have it. And I definitely recommend checking out whichever video pops up next on your screen. But thanks guys, have a great day and can't wait to see you in the next one. See ya.